Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for coming to my, my presentation. And also, uh, I see some friends who are here from long distances. Shimal is from Norway, uh, Fikadu from uh, uh, Belgium, and also uh, I see some friends from Nijmegen, and uh, a couple of friends from uh, Leiden and uh, Amsfurt. Thank you for coming to my presentation. Uh, we focus on sustainable intensification of smallholder farming systems in Ethiopia with a special focus on uh, scattered trees within agricultural landscapes. Uh, the setting is that these trees, scattered trees, are very common uh, in agricultural landscapes almost throughout uh, large parts of sub-Saharan Africa. And they are common in, in Ethiopia as well. And, and they serve multiple purposes. Uh, one of the purposes is that they can be used for the construction of uh, houses, uh, housing uh, implements, farming implements. They can be used for fencing. And uh, uh, they provide a lot of ecological services, such as shade during dry season and animal fodder, particularly when it's uh, uh, in short during dry seasons. And more importantly, these trees are very important for uh, uh, the generation of income for the households. Uh, in the form of, say, the charcoal production, uh, timber production, which, uh, which are uh, vital because income generation is really a difficult thing for smallholder uh, farmers. And my research uh, was done in two sub-Saharan uh, African countries, Ethiopia and Rwanda. And I choose these countries mainly because of the diversity of scattered uh, trees within agricultural landscapes, and because these two countries provide uh, a lot of diverse agroecologies. And uh, uh, with that, I go to uh, some of the most uh, uh, central questions that I asked and tried to answer. And the first one is uh, to look at whether uh, these scattered trees within agricultural landscape do involve uh, some trade-offs. Uh, particularly with uh, the crop or with the livestock uh, that are produced in association with those trees. And the second main question was, uh, what do farmer, why do farmers maintain? The main rationale, particularly in cases where uh, we expect trade-offs to happen between uh, trees and uh, the other component of the farming system, uh, what would be the rationale? And the third question is, uh, uh, to see whether some agronomic, agronomic management, such as uh, application of different rates of mineral fertilizer, uh, would reduce these trade-offs and facilitate the interaction between uh, the tree and the other agricultural component. And the fourth question is what uh, processes, if they exist, could lead to uh, more enhanced uh, type of interaction between trees and the other components. And finally, uh, in cases where some trees are very important, and even when they are not, I wanted to look at if uh, the current population trend is really fine, it's natural, and uh, if it's thriving. And for that, uh, I used different methodologies, sometimes in combinations such as uh, on-farm yield measurements, uh, recording some agronomic practices with farmers, and uh, undertaking some questionnaire, uh, statistical modeling, on-farm experimentation, uh, long-term experimenters, uh, population inventory, some dendrochronology, and uh, systems dynamic modeling were uh, the main methodologies used in this research. And uh, to answer the first question, uh, I looked at three different tree species within Ethiopia, which are very common. Uh, the first two, uh, Cordia and the Cruton, are very common in the sub-humid uh, parts of Western Oromia. And the last, uh, Acacia, is very common in uh, more central Ethiopia, in the Central Rift Valley. Uh, and for these three species, uh, I found that uh, Maize yield and the canopies uh, was actually lower. It means uh, the presence of these trees within agricultural landscapes uh, resulted in lower yields. That, that is a trade-off. And that means with higher densities, in order to get some benefits from the trees when the farmers increase the number of trees within the landscapes, they have to forego uh, some yield, which means uh, trade-offs are pervasive in those kind of systems. 
And then now the question is, especially if trade-offs are there, why would farmers still keep them? What is the rationale of uh, the farmers uh, when we see a lot of trade-offs uh, and it's still uh, very prevalent in these farming systems? And uh, some of the rationales is that uh, these trees actually provide a very diversified form of income. Uh, say they could get some form of small food, even if it's reduced under the canopies. They can sell timber, they can sell charcoal. Combined together, they always have some stabilized form of uh, income, and farmers then uh, prefer that income that is sure to be earned over the long term uh, compared to the monocrops that they would get uh, maybe higher, uh, but when failures happen, say in terms of crop failure or in terms of price failures, uh, farmers uh, actually prefer to use a lesser income, but more uh, sure uh, to happen. And another, uh, they also another strategy that they use is that uh, farmers use different agronomic practices in order to minimize those trade-offs. Uh, one example I, I present here is uh, the case of uh, nitrogen fertilizer urea. Uh, normally. Uh, at recommended rate, uh, additional fertilizer, fertilizer urea did not result uh, in the reduction of trade-off. Uh, as we can see, there is a high yield for outside and very uh, low yield under the canopy of these trees, uh, especially at rates that are lower than 200 kg per hectare. Uh, but with the increase of that rate, although that would be uh, uh, additional cost to the farmer, uh, there is a possibility that these trade-offs could be uh, reduced. Uh, and the, with that, I zoomed in and tried to see if some other forms of mineral fertilizer would be uh, reducing these uh, trade-offs. Uh, this is a setting of my experiment on the top uh, right corner is the setting of the experiment where I put uh, no fertilizer, fer Phosphorus only, nitrogen only, uh, and nitrogen, nitrogen and uh, phosphorus uh, in combination for both under canopy and outside canopy plots. So as we can see, uh, uh, for two of the species, uh, Acacia in Ethiopia and Grevillea in Rwanda, uh, addition of recommended rates of fertilizer actually did not reduce the trade-offs significantly. However, uh, we can see there is an increasing trend. As we move from uh, control or zero fertilizer to uh, combined application of nitrogen and the phosphorus to under canopy plots, uh, uh, we can see there is uh, a progressive increase in yield. That means a progressive uh, increase in trade-offs, uh, making us to think that uh, maybe other forms and other rates of fertilizer would reduce these trade-offs. And the important uh, case is Federbia from uh, Central Rift Valley of Ethiopia, uh, where just addition of phosphorus alone has resulted in uh, yields that are com comparable to uh, open uh, plot the yields that had received both nitrogen and the phosphorus uh, in combination. So this implies this tree, which is a nitrogen fixer, can provide uh, nitrogen in the magnitude of about uh, 64 kilograms per hectare per year. Uh, and uh, uh, because of the uh, extraordinary uh, performance with Federbia, I further looked into what other uh, processes that happen with these trees can lead to uh, uh, improved yield. And one of those is microclimate mo uh, modification. For example, uh, we can see and the canopy temperature is uh, much lower than 28 degrees. This 28 degree is the temperature uh, above which uh, wheat actually stops to be actively photosynthesizing, which means uh, yield of wheat above this temperature uh, normally gets suppressed. And because of that, uh, on the as we can see on the picture, the, the top uh, left corner picture where we don't have trees, the open field, uh, the, the wheat matures earlier than uh, under canopy uh, wheat, which got 10 extra growing days because of the shade that uh, these trees provide. Uh, and with that, uh, the yield 
uh, increment is uh, one of the uh, processes by which yield increases under this uh, tree is uh, the microclimate modification. Uh, and uh, uh, as you can see on the graph, uh, actually yield decreases as we move away from the trunk of this tree. And uh, uh, because of this, I wanted to look at Federbia in particular if the trend in population is uh, fine with this tree. Uh, for example, we have a lot of excessive pruning going on because this tree is almost the only tree within the landscape. And farmers use it for a lot of purposes, especially a lot of uh, provisioning purposes. Uh, and the seed production is sort of impaired, and I wanted to explore that using uh, uh, some approaches. And in cases where there is some regeneration, which is only natural regeneration in the case of this tree, because farmers normally don't ad undertake planned regeneration. And uh, in that case, because of the open grazing system in Ethiopia, cattle roaming in the field uh, unlimited, they would kill. Uh, the seedlings, and, and it's possible that the population of this tree uh, would be threatened. And uh, I found that uh, actually uh, there is no young uh, population for Federbia, so a lot of uh, middle-aged population and some old population, but uh, almost there is no uh, replacement happening. There is no tree that is younger than uh, 10 years and 10 to 20 years is very limited. So because of that, uh, I used the systems dynamic modeling to see what will happen in the future. And uh, uh, as can be seen from the graph, uh, if conditions continue as they are, uh, the population of this tree uh, would start to decline uh, from its current status within the coming uh, one to two decades. And it will eventually fall below uh, one tree per hectare within the coming 60 years. That is what the simulation model uh, showed us. Uh, however, with just the improvement of uh, seed production, say by leaving some uh, trees uh, within the landscape to produce uh, seeds, or by maybe having some wood lots of Federbia that would produce uh, seeds, we can uh, at least maintain the current population level uh, for some time. Uh, uh, with that, uh, I go to conclusion. What, what conclusions? What can we say? From this study, I can say most of the scattered trees are. Uh, they are distinct to, to reduce yield. They are trade-offs. Trade-offs are very pervasive in that, regardless of uh, very aggressive promotions of these trees within those farming systems. And the trees such as Federbia, uh, they are actually exceptions. It's only uh, Federbia that resulted in some positive facilitative interaction out of the five uh, trees that I studied. And uh, there is also uh, uh, why uh, farmers keep it? And farmers normally keep it for, say, uh, because of the, their preference for economies of scale. Incomes that are surer and more stable uh, to be earned are more attractive to smallholders than the income that is higher but unpredictable. And uh, there is also a, a good uh, indicate, indication that some agronomic practices, managing the crops and the land, in addition to the tree, would also reduce these trade-offs, and, and, and that is uh, a good indication. And another thing is this microclimate modification of these trees is one of the most important things that would be utilized, particularly if we are going to use these trees in sustainable intensification of smallholder uh, systems, uh, especially under uh, the future expected climate change, where temperature is going to be higher, water stress is going to be higher, uh, the shade and the water conservation uh, roles of these trees would be really helpful, particularly when we don't have a lot of options with the smallholders in dry regions that are very vulnerable to uh, the changing climate. And finally, uh, scattered trees can be good, regardless of uh, the much high the hyping going on, but not all of, all of them are good, or, or not all of them are equally good. Uh, 
so whenever we aggressively promote those kind of trees for their sustainability or for their contribution in conservation or for their biodiversity roles or uh, for their contribution in evergreen agriculture, uh, whatever the term might be, uh, we should be careful that not all trees are really that, uh, that good and, and some of the trees actually involve trade-offs and w we have to be ready to manage these trees in a way that reduces uh, the trade-offs. So that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.